following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got markets picking things up where we left off yesterday. Positive territory. s and is up by five points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100, positive by single digits, up by four. Dow up by 73, and the Russell basically flat. Boy, you add in where we were on Friday morning, right? You're talking about a price point of 42.42, and the S&Ps were 130 points above that level right now. You charge higher on Friday. Looked like we were going to pull back yesterday. Nope, we make new recent highs above the highs of Friday, and we are even just above that level right now. Trading at 43.73, we jumped to crude, backing off a bit. You spike higher Sunday night on the news of the war in Israel, and... You're up to 87.24, and we've been shopping around at about $86 in the price of crude. You jump over to gold, up about $2. We were up to near 18.80 last night in gold. You pull back to where we were yesterday afternoon with gold still up $2 on the session at 18.66. We jump over to notes and bonds. A lot of the rhetoric, a lot of the talk having to do with the slight reprieve of the trend that we've been in, right? The 10 year, Friday. You almost had a 105 handle. You got to 10606. Just like that, we almost got a 108 handle. Think about that. We almost went from a 105 handle to a 108 handle from Friday morning to when basically markets ended yesterday, Monday afternoon. Nonetheless, we've pulled back from those highs right now. You got the 10 year negative by 12 ticks. 4.7% is where we sit right now on that 10 year. We take a look at a little bit of a longer term context, okay? I mean, we are dealing with a slight reprieve on a daily basis, right? This thing has been rip-roaring negative prices since 117 on May 4th. Now, that's not like cherry-picking some high. That's on the daily. Okay, you want to cherry-pick some highs. You can go back to 2020, 2021, 2022 at 129. You can take the high of 120, excuse me, yeah, 129 back in March of last year. You can take the high of 122 back in August of last year. But I'm just taking the most recent trend. And even that, okay, we're zooming in on just the last year, this part of the chart, and taking this high. But look at where I'm going from. That's not the mammoth move, okay? And still, within the context of this move, context is so important, okay? Rip-roaring negative prices since May 4th from 117 to 107.14. You can't base two or three days of action, folks, on this reversal. Look how many times just since May 4th. We've had an acceleration. At the end of May, you went from 112.16 all the way up to 115. Two and a half points you moved over the period of three, four, five days. Then what happens? You go down to lows of July 7th. What kind of a run do you get? You get a run from 110.09 all the way up to 113.08. Three points you move higher. And boom, you rip lower to the low of about 109, right? And you make lows of 109 at on August 23rd, and just like that, you get a three-point run to the top. So we've seen three-point runs just in the move over the last five months. Three points used to be mammoth in the 10-year, man. One time, two times, three times. This is the fourth kind of pop that you've got over the period of that five-month acceleration to lower prices, and we've only gotten basically a two-point pop right now. From 106 to 108, we've backed off a bit. So keep that in context. You know, you really break out of this thing. But because we've had these similar three-point runs, you know, I'm spending a lot of time on yields, but man, it's important. Because we've had those similar rebounds in a negative trend, they match up pretty well in terms of a channel here. And so the point being, walking you through that one, okay, as I was looking at it this morning, you know, where do these line up? You could make the case maybe this top line, right? I'm just drawing it on the fly there, maybe using a little bit of linear regression, matching up to that May 4th high, maybe the top of the body. You almost touch where you were in June. You touch that area in July, in August. You get just above it in August late. We're still just off of the highs. So that's it's going to be an area slightly above where, we at, where we're at that we really need to break above 
to reverse this trend. A lot of Fed speak yesterday, of course. Maybe we're done hiking. Maybe we're higher for longer. Maybe the market is doing the Fed's job for it, right? All of this tightening, all of the higher rates, that's putting a clamp on the economy. It's higher interest rates, doing the job, Fed's job. Uh, listening to Bloomberg early this morning, and one of the analysts and one of the hosts said, you know, we get a couple more days up, and the Fed's going to have to talk about cutting again because you'll get such a reprieve. We're not quite there yet, okay? But there is volatility in notes and bonds in pretty dramatic way. You jump over to the 30-year, same thing, right? Take some context here. From where we were in April to where we were in May, now interesting, the 30-year was just above, as was the 10-year, but not quite as pronounced. The 30-year starts its descent on May 4th from a nice round number of 133. We're 22 points lower off of that level, and meanwhile, we're only two points off the low, okay? This acceleration of the last five or six weeks, yeah, it's dramatic, and it is doing some of the work for the Fed. But don't get caught up in the slight reprieve of the Fed has spoken. They're done hiking. Yields are going to get a reprieve here because yields have done the work. The market has done the work of the Fed. And I say that as in taking a look at the daily. We are basically at lows here. We're just off it, but you got the 10-year above 4.7% with yields rising yet again today. All right, let's jump around to some currencies. Dollar index this morning. And, you know, in, in the same degree as yields, the dollar's going to be inverse of that, right? I mean, look at where I had this. I mean, I must have drawn that channel sometime ending August 17th. And let's just extend it to the right. Nah, not quite where you want to be as you've broken under it. But quite the channel that's just a little bit wider, potentially. You get the point. Inverse of yields a uh, dollar with a little bit of a pullback but remember even since july let alone not taking you know how things have been different since march right look at the difference in yields versus the dollar yields have been accelerating since march meanwhile the dollar going back to march excuse me since may yes since may yields have been accelerating and you had this like pullback first right so even since yields have really accelerated this run began in the dollar on july 21st and just a slight pullback from 100 up to almost 107 we've backed off to 106 right now in the dollar index all right we talked about crude we take a look at crude and i could spend all hour saying man can you believe what's going on in israel and gaza on a humanitarian basis uh the numbers just astounding they're astounding yesterday they're probably just going to get worse sadly and it is a crisis over there, and I'm not sure how it ends without um, things getting worse, unfortunately. When you look at crude, under 86 bucks right now, 86 on the dot as we speak. Crude trades from 95 bucks down to 81.50. Pretty interesting. You're bumping against that uh, 382 on the price of crude, that 382 line, basically chopping around at 86.68, which is where we got up to on Sunday night. That area we kind of tested early this morning as well. And if you're looking for the 618, that's right near the nice round number of $90 for the price of crude. All right, we got S&Ps up seven points. We're at 43.76, markets in green territory. We got a lot to talk about. We got some Pepsi earnings we'll take a look at. We're coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hicks from Fast Market on the Schwab Network. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up by about seven points right now, trading at 43.76. Markets in positive territory, 10-year yield sitting at about 4.7%. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Check it out. Kevin, I always say it's interesting when we talk to you on Thursday, we'll see where we are on Tuesday. And it's been quite a few days in the market, let alone what's going on, sadly, over in Israel. But boy, how about these yields? How about that jobs number on Friday? Good morning, Kevin. Yeah, you're right. A lot has happened since we last spoke. And we got a jobs number. We got geopolitics. You know, Tommy, we were talking about it yesterday on the Schwab Network. Some events are on the calendar. And some events aren't on the calendar. And right now you're dealing with both, right? You're, you're dealing with events that were on the calendar we knew was coming. And we're dealing with events that clearly weren't on the calendar, Tommy. So both can move markets. Both can move premiums in both directions. So, yeah, a lot going on in this market. And, frankly, it is a headline-driven market, Tommy. you got to be watching you know, immediate breaking news that can that can make these markets move. And, you know, there there's sirens going off this morning in Tel Aviv. So there, there's there's a lot going on, Tommy. And, you know, the good news, if there's any, is that the market reaction has been pretty much by the book, which means what? Which means stocks, you know, travel stocks are lower, uh, defense stocks and energy stocks are higher. Commodities are higher. You know, stocks started the day yesterday lower on pure fear, and and then they finished the day. Why? Well, yields. Yields are now significantly below 4.7%. And so stocks reacted to that, Tommy. But, boy, there's a lot going on here, as you know. It was a great encapsulation, man, of, of the last few days. And, um yeah, I think we all woke up on Saturday, man. Pretty wild events. It's already Tuesday, um, but Friday, quite a rip-roaring rally. We're sitting 130 points above the lows that we had Friday morning on the initial sell-off. And what do you think the conversation about the Fed, Kevin? It seems like that we got a lot of Fed speak yesterday. Like you said, that accelerated the market a bit. Um, I'm getting the feeling myself that they're probably done hiking, at least for the time being. You know, anything can happen as we go forward, but we're in a pretty restrictive policy rate, at least in their opinion. And I think we're going to go forward. Do you agree with kind of that 
assessment the market made yesterday that I'm kind of, you know, clinging on to myself that it seems like they're putting that out there. It seems like that might be the case. And if that is the case, what do you think that says about yields with this recent run up we had, especially in the 10 year? We're still sitting at 4.7, not that long ago. I think we were at, what, 4.2 or something like that just months ago. Yeah. Yesterday morning, Lori Logan made some comments really before the market even opened that firmed up the overall market. And basically what she said was the higher yield and, and the steepening yield curve doing some of the Fed's work for her, for them. And the, 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 her conviction to a rate hike was diminishing. And that's a big, <coughs> excuse me, tone change by Lori Logan, because she was one of the more hawkish Fed members. And so we also had Philip Jefferson on. He's a Fed vice, he's the Fed vice chair. And he talked about we can proceed carefully, mindful of the of the yield rise. So I think some of the tone and the verbiage out of the Fed is now shifting, Tommy, where they think they're probably high enough on rates. You see the CME Fed Watch tool unchanged for November meetings, spike higher to into the 80 percentile. So that tells you right now that what the Fed is saying, we have more Fed speakers today, Raphael Bostic, Neil Kashkari, Mary Daly. So you're going to get more comments. Let's see if they reiterate what Lori Logan and Philip Jefferson said yesterday, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, we were listening yesterday. The market was listening yesterday. And like you said, we get some more speak today. Um, and before we know it, it's going to be Fed Day yet again. Already October 10th. Pretty wild as time flies. Uh, just a few weeks out now. About four, what are we? Yeah, only a few weeks out, really, from um, another Fed decision. With that in mind, Kevin, fast market at 12 today. Do you guys have any equities that you'll be talking about on the schedule? Yeah, we have a pause in earnings as we get ready for the big day on Friday. But we, we'll look at Rivian and Tesla today in the first two segments. We'll cover those stocks, both stocks moving pre-market. And then, like we did yesterday, we looked at um, defense stocks, right? And we're, today we'll look, at, we'll look at Northrop Grumman having a big jump off the earnings move and up again this morning. So, yeah, we're looking at uh, electric cars and defense stocks today, Tommy. Yeah, look at that as I'm pulling up. Northrop Grumman, NOC is the symbol yesterday, uh, all the way from 440. Is that? Yeah, 471, man. From Friday, the low 471, and today we're up to 476. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning as well. Thanks for having me out, Tommy. Have a great day. You as well. Folks, check it out every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Fast Market with your host, Kevin Higgs, Tom White. Uh, you heard about it, talking about three great stocks out there. And yeah, how about that chart, right? I couldn't... Um, 414 on Friday morning, up to 470 yesterday, up to 480 today. And boy, when is this thing going to slow down? Because that war is not slowing down, man. Uh, the numbers are startling, and that's not even a word that does it justice. You know, I you know I, I could just sit here and and stumble over the the numbers and the loss of life and the boy the stories I'm reading in the Times this morning about the people that are kidnapped and the guy that's got two daughters over there and his wife and all this stuff. Um, Scary stuff to see where that goes, especially as you have many people still kidnapped. So this is something that unfortunately is going to rage on when you have people that are kidnapped. It, you know, it speaks for itself, to put it lightly, right? Yeah, so Northrop coming up uh, yet again today. Markets in positive territory. Let's check around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. We jumped to Amazon. They're basically flat, 128 quite a day yesterday from 125. I mean, look at these two reversals, right? Friday, Monday, you're talking about a range of $4 on Friday. You're talking about a range of $3, almost $4 on just mammoth moves and volatility. You jump over to Apple, the big dog. They're going to be lower this morning by about a dollar. So what do they got going on? They got something going on, right? To be lower by a dollar. Yeah, as this market is basically flat, NASDAQ might be the weakest index out here as it's only up by four. Microsoft shares, barely in the positive this morning. You jump over to NVIDIA, slightly positive as well. We check out Tesla. They'll be talking about Tesla coming up on Fast Market today. Tesla trading slightly lower. They had more car price cuts, uh, was that Friday, I believe? And look at, look at the reversal for them as well in terms of just trading higher all intraday after trading lower into the open. Tesla trades $10 higher yesterday 
on Friday and they trade ten dollars higher on Monday. Market saving itself on a couple occasions there. And Rivian, yeah, there was I think it was a journal article I was reading recently, man, talking about Rivian. Let's go back and see the whole deal. So you push this out to the public, get it up to 179 within a couple weeks, 180. Right now you're at 18 bucks. That correlates to a market cap of 18 billion dollars. So they got about a billion shares outstanding. That makes it simple math. They were pushing 180 billion dollar market cap pre-revenue. Folks, what's that gentleman's name that was the CEO? Is the CEO, I think? And that guy deserves, I mean, between him and and the guy pushing out WeWork, right? But he got a company pre-revenue to trade at $180 billion. Pretty remarkable. They'll be talking about those equities on Fast Market. We'll be talking about Pepsi and Disney when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. You jump to an S&P five minute chart. You're pushing the pre-market session highs, 4376.25 right now. You're positive by about eight points. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by 24. That's just about two tenths percent. The Dow up a quarter percent and the Russell up about four tenths percent. So all the markets positive between one to three to four tenths percent, right? Barely in the positive. We jump over to crude. 
sitting at $86 and change, $86.29. The gold contract up by $4 this morning right now, but pulling back from the overnight highs of $18.79. We're at $18.68 in the price of gold. You jump over to the dollar index. We're at $105.97. We jump to yields, keeping our eye on. Pulls back a bit, 107.15. We're pushing right now 4.7%, the yield on the 10-year. We jump to Rivian. So they're going to be talking about Rivian and Tesla coming up on Fast Market today, uh, as well as Northrop Grumman, which is having quite a day for itself on the extension of yesterday. Let's see how it's trading before we jump. Uh, they pull back a bit, so up uh, up barely, Northrop Grumman. But boy, yesterday it trades from 420 to 470, right? But we're talking about Rivian coming into the break there. And I did find that article real quickly because I did talk about it on the program, and it was last week. So October 2nd, the article was Quibian's Rivian's quest to build the ultimate truck burns through billions. The EV maker has struggled to keep production up and costs down. The one thing I wanted to talk about here, they're so expensive to build that in the second quarter, the company lost $33 on every car it sold. That's roughly the starting price of a base model Ford F-150. They're losing that much. Okay, they sell them for 80 grand. I've seen a couple as well, and they, they look pretty cool. Um, but in its two years, Rivian has blown through half of its $18 billion cash pile, in part because it struggled to master the nuts and bolts of manufacturing. <laughs> Not exactly the headlines you want, right? That's from the Wall Street Journal eight days ago. Um, and they go into greater detail, of course, but those are some pretty big numbers. They aim to produce 52,000 vehicles this year. Imagine, folks, this company was almost worth a quarter of a trillion dollars. You got to have some semblance. Now, uh, they got an upgrade, I believe, today. Let's take a look at where we are. I think they got an upgrade by somebody saying, um, all right, I will find it. But nonetheless, that was the journal article. All right, I believe they did. Let's see if it's right over here. Yeah, there it is. They have to... Um, They're looking for 24 to $26, UBS upgrades, Rivian Automotive. And I guess they just had a, a cash raise, maybe, is that what happened? And so, you know, they go to the market raising capital. You trade lower, and nonetheless, that now presents a little bit of value is what they're saying. But boy, be careful, uh, because you're still talking about a company, okay, that is valued at $18 billion, and they're making 50,000 cars and losing $33,000 per vehicle. We've seen how that can turn around with Tesla, okay, because the same narratives were running early on. They're producing, you know, marginal amounts of cars, tens of thousands of cars compared to the big automakers. But what cracks me up was the beginning of that run, and we all get quite an education. There's nothing like experience, folks, right, because... Because come on, man, right? That's that's all you can say. Come on, man. You were pushing out a car company pre-revenue at $180 billion market cap. Now, people got a little excited because you jump over to a company like Tesla and they're valued at $827 billion, okay? Um, but not comparable, to say the least. That company was pre-revenue. Tesla's got a lot going on, a lot more so than, than Rivian, to put it lightly. All right, we jump around. We jump to Pepsi. Pepsi on their numbers, up a bit, up three quarters percent. And we jump over to the Pepsi headline here. Beats Wall Street's estimates and raises the earnings outlook. Still up by less than 1% on a positive day in the market. They beat with 225 versus 215 expense expected. They marginally beat on revenue, 23.45 billion versus 23.39. For the fiscal year, Pepsi now expects constant currency earnings per share growth of 13%. They were prior looking for 12 third consecutive quarter that um, they've hiked their full year forecast 3.09 billion up from 2.7 billion for the third quarter net income attributable to the company not bad in 90 days right net sales rose six percent the company's organic revenue which excludes acquisitions climbed 8.8 percent north american beverages unit reported volume declines of six percent there were some bright spots. Gatorade saw double-digit revenue growth. I drink a lot of Gatorade Zero. I will uh, say that. The company also plans to relaunch Mountain Dew Baja Blast, a fan-favorite flavor that is only available at Taco Bell and the healthiest stuff around. I'll add, no, 
not, not the hell. Mountain Dew Baja Blast uh, with Taco Bell, not the healthiest stuff around. Doesn't mean you can't do it selectively. Uh, but boy, soda in general, folks, if you can avoid it, avoid it. It's the worst thing you can have for yourself. Uh, even juice, okay, added sugar. I always like to jump around with health because I find that when I'm healthier, when, I, when I'm eating healthy, getting some exercise, taking walks, just getting outside, your mind is clearer, you're more in control of your decisions when you're eating healthy, making those decisions well. So I'd like to combine some of that. With Tommy in the house, right, you start looking at everything. Little kids, you know, I wanna make sure he's having healthy stuff. And the one thing that you find out is added sugar is in everything, folks. Added sugar is in everything. Juice has a lot of sugar, okay, uh, which is a carbohydrate. But if it's natural, that's one thing. Okay, you don't want added sugars. Even something like juice, something like juice has tons of added sugar. So apple juice, for instance, right? Kids love apple juice. Tommy, he loves apple juice. We give him apple juice. You'd be surprised how much added sugar is in apple juice. Now, here's the kicker. They have apple juice. They call it like for tots or something like that. Mott's for tots, maybe something like that. Some, um, you can find it in the grocery store in the juice aisle. And it has like half the sugar or whatever it is. All they do is they just don't add sugar. And you know what? It's actually better. I have it sometimes. He has it. Um, it's still got sugar in it. It's still got carbs. It's got the natural sugar that comes from an apple, right, or stuff like that. People are always like, oh, bananas have a lot of fruit. Folks, don't worry about eating a banana um, because it's got a lot of sugar, okay? Nobody's ever gotten extremely obese and unhealthy from eating too much fruit. So with that aside, um, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Listen, I used to love Mountain Dew. I could crush Mountain Dew, man. I could crush eight cans of Mountain Dew like it was nothing, okay? Stack them all up. Those were the days, uh, and those were not healthy days. So looking to 2024, um, that, that, that aside, Pepsi anticipates organic revenue growth in the high end of the 4 to 6% region and core constant currency earnings uh, in the high single digits. So the market likes that. Pepsi trading a little bit higher today, up by 1.7%. We jump over to Disney shares. Disney, down about three tenths percent right now. They've been on a little bit of a run higher from 78 up to 84. And I just want to touch on briefly uh, Bloomberg article out this morning, right? This morning, last night, when's it out? Yeah, early this morning. Has Bob Iger lost the magic? They're coming at him, man. Um, and we, a couple things I found interesting here. We're going to come into this break, and I'll finish it up. But, boy, the numbers that Iger put up, and then you compare it to the pullback they've had, you've erased almost everything, man. If you put money in two, so here's – when Iger was there from 2005 till 2020, the stock went up fourfold. Yeah, Disney's market value had grown fourfold since he took the job in 2005, okay? Now – there were some decent years for the market in 2005 to 2020. Okay, we'll talk about this when we get back. We'll take a look at Disney. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Bob Iger, Bob Iger, and we'll talk some other equities, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets in positive territory, just marginally higher across the board right now. s and is up by six points. So taking a look at the longer term market, right? We're talking about Disney, some interesting stats in there. When you take a look at this market in Disney, what it talks about was Iger was there as CEO 2005 to 2020. During that time, the stock went up fourfold. Okay. Now the S&P at that point was at 1285. It already doubled from the cherry picked lows of Oh, no, that low is, I was looking for 665. That's 2009. Uh, but 2005, you're at 1,200 and change. You do go down to 665, but by the time you hit 2020, right? I mean, we're coming into the pandemic at 3,200 in the S&P, so you're almost threefold above where you were at in 2005, 1,200 to 3,600 almost. Okay, so Disney had went fourfold over that time is what they had mentioned in this article. You take a look at Disney. Disney in 2005 was trading at 25 bucks, and uh, 2020, that looks like even more. She got up to 138, maybe he left at some point, uh, 125, something like that. Nonetheless, what they do talk about here is that we've now gotten to the point that if you just put money in the S&P because of the pullback Disney has gotten, okay, um, you've lost all that, and you're actually now behind just the S&P as when you, if you had traded, bought into Disney when Iger began. So to have that kind of legacy there is pretty interesting. Uh, Disney's lost the company more than $2 billion through so far this year, bleeding through subscribers. That's Disney Plus. They're trying to figure out what to do there right now. And they do talk about what he did, man. You look at it, right? He oversaw the acquisition of Pixar. Think about that, right? Pixar. Seems like that's a Disney company. It has been forever. No. Uh, Marvel, Lucas, 21st Century Fox. Uh, he pulled those off of Netflix, built Disney Plus, got it launched, signed up 10 million people on the first day. He launched new cruises. He opened a theme park in Shanghai. And by the time he stepped down, the company had went up fourfold. But nonetheless, where are they right now? They decide, yeah, that they, here we go. That's, I was looking for the quote. Thank you for hanging with me. Uh, the stock market has erased all trace of Iger's laurels. Investors would be worse off today if they bought Disney shares when he first became CEO in October of 2005 than if they just put money in the S&P 500. Uh, part of the reason why, when I was getting calls even last week saying, you know, it's a pretty affordable price to get in, because here's the kicker of that as well. 
you'd be better off at that point. But look at where we are. I mean, not only was 2005 trading at 26, but you're getting in the same price in 1997 as 2005. Yeah, which is not the case in the market, which is what I figured. You know, the S&P in 1997 was at 800. By 2005, you went up to 1200. So you, you made 50% on your money. Disney's lagging, man, in a big way, and they probably deserve it right now. But boy, it's quite a give back from 200 to 84. You're back to where you were basically in 2014, wiping out 10 years. And uh, you see the comparison to the S&P in terms of how it has lagged dramatically. And I imagine that Iger still has uh, the will and skill to get that done. I'm biased. I get Disney in retirement account, folks, for what it's worth. Um, but I have it for the reason I'm, I'm telling you about. And I've done the schedule um, on this show before, talking about the movies that Disney's coming out with. You go two or three years down the line, man, you're pumping out two to three Star Wars films, you have another Avatar film, you have Marvel films, but you got three Star Wars films coming down the line, etc. They haven't been seen since, I think, 2019. Um, so I'm sure those Star Wars fanatics, you're not going to see a Star Wars flop. It's possible, okay? Um, but boy, that is the core of their business. That Star Wars deal, what they buy Lucas Films for? Like $4.5 billion? Basically pennies. They got that money back within a few years of pumping out some Star Wars films. All right, what else we got pulled up? Let's see, we talked about Disney, we talked about Pepsi. Uh, yeah, we could talk about Bank of America and their interest. Uh, they were not looking for what's happening. Yeah, you do have President Biden. He's going to be talking at 1 o'clock today, I believe. Let's see, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So not sure it's going to be market moving. You can probably write the script yourself, I imagine, from what's going on right now. I hope so. Um, in terms of, you know, full support, doing what we need to do, sending over the carriers there, et cetera. Uh, but we'll see what he has to say at 1 o'clock. And you go from there in terms of that. And as I said, I could spend, you know, a whole program going over some of the visuals and the hardships and, man, the humanitarian deal and how that ends. But um, we're all watching it happen and hoping for the best. Not sure how that happens. Jumping in a little bit, uh, SBF. The $35 million crypto frat house in the Bahamas. Uh, how about this thing, man? Just had to pull it up. He was living the life off everybody else's money, that's for sure. Check out some of these visuals, man, of the of the frat house they had. I mean, they're, they're, they're releasing these. They're, they're putting these into the public um, to show the life of opulence, right? They want to show that he was stealing this money from everybody and living here, which is what he was doing, in my opinion, okay? Uh, lawyers for the U.S. Attorney's Office entered into evidence a series of photos featuring the $35 million penthouse where Sam Bankman Freed and his fellow co-workers resided. And then what was interesting was um, they have this text down here, okay? And they're talking about people of the house referring to it and how they were misusing funds of what this, and this goes through how they were trying to figure out who was going to pay for this. People saying, maybe I could swing 15K a month, but it might be rough. And he comes in here and says that he's mentally been assuming that the aggregate rent collected would be zero. Um, I'm totally fine, excited if others want to have economic exposure to it, but have been assuming that it's basically just Alameda paying for it in the end. Um, Anything can happen, as we know, in these trials. It's going to be interesting to see how that comes down. But boy, um, quite the Ponzi scheme indeed. He was just like doing everything, right? Spent $256 million bucks to buy and maintain 35 different property, uh, properties. <whistles> just amazing, man. Yeah, and these pictures are pretty incredible. Look at these views, right? 35 million bucks, it better buy you some views. All right, what, do, what else do we have pulled up here? Um, yeah, let's jump around, see how some of the equities are trading right now. We jump over to Disney as we were talking about. They're basically flat this morning. We check out Rivian shares. They'll be talking about Rivian. Look at that, up 4.8% this morning as they get an upgrade 5%, make it for Rivian shares, 1975. We jump over to Tesla. Woo! Look at this thing, man, from 258 to 264. What's going on in Tesla? I don't know, but they got buyers right now for Tesla up to 265 almost. You're up by 2%. They'll be talking about Rivian and Tesla coming up on Fast Market at 12 today. Northrop Grumman 
They pull back a bit from their acceleration. That's the third equity they'll be talking about at 12 o'clock today. We check out some of the big dogs. Apple shares barely in the negative by about five tenths percent. Keep our eye on Amazon. It's interesting how you just got divergences here, right? Microsoft negative by four tenths. Retail, Amazon picking things up a bit. You jump over to NVIDIA shares, basically flat. NASDAQ 100, the weakest index out there. You're barely up one tenth percent. S&P is up two tenths right now. Dow, I guess, up one tenth as well. Russell, up by 12 points right now, leading the way, up seven tenths percent. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving this morning. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 10 points right now. Russell up by 15. You get the NASDAQ 100. We're up by 28. And the Dow up by 28 as well. S&Ps now up by 2 tenths percent. How about that, Russell, man? Up by 8 tenths percent. Catching a bid. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index right now back to 1727, right near the lows of Friday as volatility premium abates as this market just keeps going higher. The 10-year right now, we're at 107.14. You get the 10-year yield sitting at about 4.8. 7%. You know what I was going to do? So I pull it up and I jump around. Uh, talking about this article here, and this one was, Treasuries have the best day since March on the signs that the Fed may be done. This was talking about yesterday. This was out last night, okay? Now, what's remarkable here is, you know, it's tough to almost remember even 
where rates have gone so fast. Is this the one that has a different? No. So we were just at 4.2% like six weeks ago. And we were talking about 4.9%. That's a mammoth move, man. It's almost hard to remember that we move that quickly. Does this one talk about the rates too? No, let's talk about Bank of America. Yeah, nonetheless, uh, rates higher, to put it lightly. I was going to pull up real quick. We always talk about the five-year ladder. Let me see if I can find it real quick as we talk in this final segment. Because we've been pushing about a 5.13% yield on a five-year ladder. And I imagine that number staying pretty consistent. And we are, again, today at a 5.13 yield. I mean, these numbers, man, uh, that's quite a risk-free rate of return, to put it lightly. We check in on crude, a little bit of a pullback on crude in the last few minutes. We're dropping from 86.40. We're down to an 85 handle at 85.71. We keep our eye on the dollar as we wrap things up. Dollar index right now just under 106. And we'll check out the euro as we complete the program with the euro. Oh, not the euro yen. We're looking for the euro dollar at just about 106. This market, relentless to the upside, to put it lightly, 43.78 in the S&Ps. Folks, thanks so much for starting your Tuesday off with me. Stay tuned. we got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up live with the Tiger Technicians Hour next. Stay tuned for Basil, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great one, folks.